Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft. Welcome to my yarn adventures and the week that was. I have a gift, some finished objects and maybe a bit of life update at the end. So, let's get started. My week was a bit up and down like a roller coaster and I was pretty low and lo and behold a subscriber buys me a pattern. Um, I saw this pattern on Ruth Loves to Knit and I did favorite it in Ravelry and I thought oh that's really nice especially the one she models. Now all the patterns, tutorials, channels I mentioned will be listed in this description below so make sure you check them out. I really have to watch Ruth Loves to Knit even Saxon likes her. He sits there watching. I think it's her accent because he's just enthralled in watching her. I tried to get video, but he's a bit camera shy in my dog. He's a bit aware when I'm there with the camera, but he did. He was really watching her. Anyway, the pattern was gifted to me by a lovely subscriber I've known quite a long time. And um, yeah, it was a real... Yet again, uplifting moment for me in a difficult week. So the pattern is, I'll just make sure there's nothing on the bottom. The Flying Fox Shawl. It's a knitted pattern, but according to Ruth, it's really easy. So I should be able to do this. Now, this is done in Pima Cotton by We Are Knitters. And Ruth did it, and that's a like an Aran 10-ply weight. Ruth knitted it in a DK way in a variegated yarn and looked really nice. So I'm going to probably do DK weight when I, I've got three yarns picked out. I thought I would have a decision last night when Reeves checked them out, but he couldn't decide between two of them. So anyway, this she suggested my subscriber would grade it, a great, make a great holiday knitting project. And I think it will. But I'm not going to buy special yarn for it because I have three great yarns in my stock that I could use and enough of them. It takes approximately 640 metres in the Aran. So there you have it. Thank you so much. You know who you are and it is greatly appreciated. I do love it. And it <laughs> second week that it's a pattern has come in when I've needed to get off the couch because I'm like, I can't move anymore I'm just over it thank you once again so I got a bit more motivated because of what had a palooza this week the hat was the herringbone slouch hat I've looked at it before and thought that looks nice but too hard and skipped past it well it is nice and it's really easy and I love it you want to see mine da -dun, da -dun. here she is the herringbone slouch. Her head's a bit small. Um, it, herringbone's traditionally done in black and white and the yarn suggested was Red Heart by Bag Air Crystal. And I had Red Heart, Red and Black. I didn't have enough white. So I thought oh, I'll do it in Red and Black. And I think it turned out great. Um, I tried it on without the, the pom-pom and uh, Reed said it needs a pom-pom. I mean, I'm not great at making pom-poms. I just sort of did that one but the thing with my pom-pom is it's detachable inside like I put a loop on it and then thread it through and inside there's a button so if you don't want to wear a pom-pom you can take it off but it is really nice and really easy and it did sort of give me a bit of my crojo back so that was Mad Mimi's Farming and Crochet we're doing Bod Hatapalooza with and we're doing all of Bag o Day hat patterns there you go that's really nice. So then I, um, oh, the colour was black and hot red. They were the two colours from Red Heart Super Saver. Now, I have been working on stuff for my trip for me that I wanted. There were four whips I had on the go. I finished two, and I'm not sure I'll get the other two finished before I go. I may take one of them with me because I really want to finish it, and uh, but we'll see. So the first one I finished was, if you see over here, this is my Staff Lake Shawl by Stephen West that I did with Mouse's Makes. And I had some yarn left over and I thought, I'm taking that with me because Edinburgh will be really cold and I'd make a beanie. So there you have it. I knitted a slouch beanie for myself in the leftover yarn. 
Unfortunately, I didn't have any dark purple left over, which it would have looked great in it. And when I tried to buy more, the purple, which is called Lux, I think is currently out of stock. But that's my beanie to match my Starflake shawl to take to the UK. I'm not modeling it. You might see it in a photo when I'm on holidays. The other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to take an amigurumi that can pop up in photos. And one of my subscribers, Karen, she had bought me a while back Nesta the Loch Ness Monster. This one. It's a paid for pattern on Ravelry. And I thought that is perfect because if you're new to the channel, I'm off to the UK and I'm off to Scotland and the Orkney Islands. I think this is amazing. Now it's made with a five ply yarn, but I and a five ply cotton, but I decided he may turn out a little bigger, but I'm going to make him with um, Bendigo cotton eight ply. Let's see my da -da, da -da. here he is. My Nesta. Now his head is funny. It can sit up. I actually put pipe cleaners in it, but it is a bit floppy. It's well stuffed. Um, some of the instructions sort of you'd have to be a little bit more experienced. You couldn't be an outright beginner, like working out. They tell you where the head goes, but you have to put it, you know, work it out for yourself. But there you go. So he's called Nesta in the pattern. But Reeves reckons we should give him another name. So have you any name suggestions? Reeves suggested Haggis or Lockie. Um, one of my bosses said, how about Scotty? But yeah, he's pretty cute. I really like him. And I think I'll enter him in Amigurumi Wars when I work out what's wrong with his neck. And I'm going to make him a scarf because I think he's going to get cold in Edinburgh. And that will go with um, Amigurumi Wars, which I'll tell you about in another video because I've got a couple of things on the go that for August Amigurumi Wars. What do you think? What shall we call him? Nessie? I don't know. Let me know below if you've got a great name for my Loch Ness Monster with his movable floppy head that can go down or up. That might be the pipe cleaners. Maybe I should have put something more solid. But yeah, I just used the Bendigo cotton and these blue bits of scraps. Um, I don't know what even brand they are and even those are scraps. But yeah, he turned out really well. And it's such an easy pattern to follow. Just putting it together relies on a bit of experience and working out what have I had done to his neck to make it so floppy. But there you go. My Loch Ness Monster for my trip to Edinburgh and Scotland. Um, the pattern is by dun, 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 DIY Fluffies. I actually think that may one have been one of the spotlight designers earlier in the year for Amigurumi Wars. It does say skill level intermediate. Um, Loch Ness Monster is seven, um, 21 centimetres, 8.5 inches. Yeah, I guess he's come out pretty big, really. He's come out fairly close to the pattern. That's why I don't understand why it'd be five ply. So they're the things I was working on. The other two things are um, both knitted projects, one in cotton, one in wool. And yeah, whether I get them finished or not is another thing. If I do before I go, I will definitely show you. If I get them finished when I'm overseas, I may show you there. So what else have I got? I think that may be it. Oh, just a bit of an update. The baby blanket pattern that I, I said I wanted a baby, knit a baby or crochet baby blanket on the plane, a traveling project. I can only crochet on a plane, on one of the airlines I'm going with. And um, any suggestions? Now, a lot of people suggested the spike stitch for a baby blanket. And Karen Wright, she recommended the Speedy Gr Ruth Granny, or Granny Ruth, the Speedy Granny Ruth was by Krista at the Secret Yarnery. If you won't hold a minute, I'll be back in a sec. I'm back. I had to go and get it because I've actually, I have to work out which way. I've actually started it, ready for my trip. I've made it a bit longer than Krista has it because I wanted it a bit longer. 
but she does give you the breakdown so you can and I actually really like it I'm not sure the spike stitch will feature really well on this um, Lion brand lemon meringue ice cream yarn but who cares I think it looks it's turning out really well I've done a um, because it's like a DK or 8 ply weight or 3 weight I'm using a 4 millimeter crochet hook when I started it I started it with one of these um, big W crochet hooks um, I'd never used it before and I thought oh, I'll try that I can't say I'm a fan I find the the head a little shallow so sometimes I don't feel like I'm hooking the yarn properly um, I'm just a bit worried if I change it it'll look funny to a different brand to like clover but we'll see because I haven't done very much but it's always best to start your project when you're going on a flight because when it goes through customs or security they can see you do actually crochet um, so yeah I've started it it's quite addictive I had to stop because I thought I could finish this before I go anyway thank you everyone for your input on the um, baby blanket recommending the spike stitch and especially Karen for recommending um, the secret yarn use speedy granny Ruth granny because um, it's perfect and it, Krista always does a great tutorial it's really easy to follow so what else have I got for you not a lot I don't think um, that's about it I'm going to keep working this week on trying to finish some of those projects that I want to take with me and um, yeah it's what is it August the 8th 10 days and I'll be up up and away on my way to the UK so and I am looking forward to it I, I'm ready for a good break so guys I hope you can come up with a great name for my Loch Ness monster whether we call him Nessie I'm definitely not calling him Haggis as Reeb suggested but he may get a football scarf to wear in the cold weather but anyway until next time, stay safe, stay well, and make sure you have a crafty day. Bye for now.